do like that and not have to think about it anymore because of yoga. Oh, what it's done for my hips and my back, and it's just the fluidity is your hips, pretty great. Your back, your yoga is the crack. You don't know the real song I'm singing, do you? No, I don't. That's very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions, Dean. It's Tom Corbin. Womp is inappropriate. Oh, is this one even worse? Just as bad. All right, I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, 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 uh, the science behind popular Indian traditions. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, well, I know India has a lot of traditions. They I'm do, sure. but the science behind them? Well, I'm sure... This is cool. Because <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of them are so <laughs> old because yeah. they come from centuries of families doing and right. passing it down. And so, I'm, I mean, yoga came from India. There's right. science behind yoga. Absolutely, there is. Um, so I'm sure it's a bunch of that. So here we go. <laughs> pristine ground of spirituality, a land with a 7,000 year old history, a land held tight to its ancient traditions embedded with fruits of its deep-rooted culture passed on through generations, sentiments intact. Despite having witnessed or belonged to this society with innumerable traditions, we lack the understanding of the logical reason behind several rituals and customs and brand them superstitious and meaningless. We have shelved away many of these anecdotes passed on by our forefathers with years of increasing westernization, a lot of it because of sheer ignorance. Cool have we ever wondered why certain things are devised the way they are? Yes. Always. Why do we have specifications to every ritual followed? Always ask why. <laughs> That's a beautiful temple. Idol worship is a form of prayer. But what is the reason behind installing these idols in magnificently constructed temples? Dang, look at that. What is the purpose of the temples color. at all? <laughs> temples are constructed in zones where positive vibrations from the earth's magnetic and electric fields can be tapped in abundance. The peak of this energy is felt at the Garbhagraha or the Sanctum Sanctorum where the deity is installed. People are asked to walk barefoot in temples so that the radiation is easily absorbed. Hmm. Men are advised to visit temples bare-chested as the human hair has the capacity to absorb positive energy. Women are asked to wear gold ornaments when they visit the temples as gold is one of the hmm. best absorbers and radiators of positive energy. Hmm. This is why many temple vimanas are made of gold too. We walk around the Sanctum Sanctorum oh, to wow. enable a state of equilibrium for the brain by its movement around a source of positivity. These are some of the reasons behind the sense of serenity that fills a person from within whenever they visit a temple, regardless of their belief. Felt it in the Golden Temple. Sure did. Whatever that was, it was incredibly calming. An unsaid rule from the ancient times is that the temple should be the tallest construction in that particular town or city. We see this rule in prevalence in the Agraharam style of civilization in the rural areas. The reason commonly stated is that God is the supreme and hence the temple must be the tallest. Actual reason behind this practice is the absorbing power of the temple Gopuram. The Gopuram is usually filled with paddy on the inside which is an excellent absorbent of shock waves. Wherever lightning hits the village, the rays are diverted to the Gopuram and the excess harmful rays are transmitted to the earth. Mm. 
beneficial cosmic rays from wow. the atmosphere are retained <laughs> by the paddy and radiated inside the temple. There have been debates regarding conducting Abhishekams for stone idols in temples. These age-old granite idols have the tendency to develop cracks on aging. Regular contact with agents such as milk, honey and oil help in keeping the idol intact, thus preserving these ancient sculptures. Another interesting observation is that the base on which these idols are mounted is made up of a specific alloy of gold, silver and traces of lead which have medicinal properties when combined with milk and honey. This is why milk and panjamridam from the Abhishekam that are distributed are said to have special properties that cure many diseases. Earlier, when the literacy rate in the country was much less than it is now, instilling a fear of God was the only way to put forth scientific ideas and practices involving logical reasoning. We have unfortunately forgotten the essence of such genius measures and brush them away as superstitious. So they used God to forward science and yeah, on the gotcha. The Ganesha sitting beneath the people tree or the Arasamara Vinayagar is a widely popular deity of worship among women. Yeah, it's a lot of those. There is a common belief that women who are unable to conceive will be able to do so if they visit this Vinayagar every day in the early hours of the morning with wet clothes after a shower and walk in circles around the tree. The secret behind the miraculous success of this practice is the peepal tree. This tree is known to give out high amounts of oxygen and very minimal amounts of carbon dioxide through the day. Oxygen is said to be the best cure for hormonal imbalances in the body and naturally brings undernourished organs back to normalcy. Gradually, the hormones in the uterus start functioning routinely and the woman is able to conceive. Wet clothes help in better absorption of oxygen, thus ensuring maximum benefit of the ritual. The motive behind placing the pillar is to convince people to follow it in the name of God, giving them a reason to diligently pursue it. tradition, <laughs> crows are given special importance as they are considered ancestors. After the meal for the day is prepared, a portion of every dish is kept outside for the crows to feast on so that the members of the family oh have the satisfaction gosh. of having fed their ancestors. Uh. Are they really our ancestors or have our forefathers just been spinning yarns? There is an interesting reason behind this age-old tradition. Tell me it. Earlier on, when there was no electricity and hence no proper light in the early hours of the morning, people were doubtful of the food they cooked. The crow, as we all know, is a creature that can eat almost anything it dies. and that which never refuses food. Ah. Interestingly, it can sense the presence of any kind of poison in food. It simply refuses food if it senses poison in it. People from the ancient times happened to use the crow as a tester for food smartly without harming it. Hmm. Smart. It's amazing how animals can do that. Yeah. And sense danger coming before yeah. it comes. When yeah. it comes to the food system, Indian cuisine is one of the most balanced cool. regimes, okay. including optimum quantities of all nutrients conceived into delicious dishes that are easily digestible. Our ancestors even had appropriate meal timings devised to ensure proper and timely metabolism and digestion for adequate energy to carry out the tasks through the day. As an ancient custom says, the best kind of diet for any human being or living animal in a region is the diet consisting of foods grown in the same area. We have essentially evolved through the years that, that, to belong yes. to a tropical climate and be accustomed to the foods and lifestyle offered by this region. With the arrival of foreign cultures and lifestyles, 
The concept of eating out was brought about with the expansion and trade of foreign cuisines which sadly are not the best suited diets for the Indian stomach. <laughs> Most importantly, <laughs> eating outside food greatly disturbed the timing of meals. We may believe that the only consequences of ill-timed meals are acidity and gastroenteritis, but actually the human body functions by a system of energy flow between organs. Ancient scriptures of naturopathy and manuscripts of Ayurveda hold references to the organ clock. Anakam, nama orang 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 macam orang orang macam orang 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 macam 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 orang அந்த கழிவுகள் அதிகமாகி டாக்ஸின் டாக்ஸினாக மாறி பிளட் கெமிஸ்ட்ரியை கெடுத்து ஸோ அசிடிட்டிக்காக அல்கலைனாக இருந்த உடல்நிலை வந்து அசிடிட்டிக்காக கன்வெர்ட் ஆகிடுச்சு அசிடிட்டிக்காக கன்வெர்ட் ஆன உடனே உடலால் அந்த கழிவுகளை வெளியேற்ற முடியாதனால உடம்பு தன்னோட ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் சிஸ்டத்தை இழந்தது ஆட்டோ இம்யூன் சிஸ்டத்தை இழந்த உடனே தனக்குத்தானே புதுப்பிக்கும் தன்மையில் செல்கள் இருந்த நிலையை மாறி இப்போ செல்கள் வந்து இறந்த செல்கள் அதிகமாக ஸ்டோரேஜ் ஆக ஆரம்பித்த உடனே நியூ செல் ஜென்ரேட் ஆகாமல் தான் நோய்கள் வர ஆரம்பிச்சது இதுக்காக பாரம்பரிய உணவு முறைகளில் நம்மளோட கலாச்சாரத்திலையும் நம்மளோட வாழ்வியல் முறையிலையும் ஸோ உணவு மற்றும் வாழ்வியல் முறைன்னு வரும்போது ஸோ காலமும் உணவு முறையும் உழைப்பும் சரியான முறையில் இருந்ததுனால அவங்களுக்கு வாழ்க்கையில் இந்த நோய் என்ற ஒரு விஷயமே இல்லாமல் ஆரோக்கியத்தை மட்டுமே நோக்கி பயணம் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க ஸோ பன்னெண்டு ஆர்கனுக்கும் இருபத்தி நாலு மணி நேரம் டைம் கொடுத்துருக்கோம் அதில் ரொம்ப முக்கியமாக சொல்லணும்னா ஸோ லிவர் தன்னோட கழிவுகளை முழுமையாக வெளிநீக்கி உடம்புல இருக்க மொத்த ரத்தத்தையும் டயலிசிஸ் பண்ணி ஸோ தன் கழிவுகளை வெளி நீக்கி பிளட் பிளட் கெமிஸ்ட்ரியை ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ண வைக்கிறதுக்கு ரொம்ப முக்கியமான நேரமானது ஸோ சாயந்தரம் பத்து மணிலருந்து கா மூணு நாலு மணி வரும் யார் நல்ல ஆழ்ந்த தூக்கம் தூங்குறாங்களோ அவங்களுக்கு எந்த நோயும் வராது ஸோ பிளட் பிளட் ஆட்டோ டயாலிசிஸ் ப்ராசஸ் இதில் உணவின் பத்து மணிக்கு தூங்க போனோம்னா நீங்கள் ஏழு மணிக்கு நிச்சயமாக சாப்பிட்ருக்கணும் உணவு முறையை முடிச்சிருக்கணும் மூணு மணி நேரம் இடைவெளிக்கு பிறகு தூக்கம் இருந்தால் ஆழ்ந்த தூக்கம் வந்து லிவர் தன் எனர்ஜியை முழுமையாக பயன்படுத்தும் இந்த இடத்துல தான் நம்ம லிவர் எனர்ஜியை பயன்படுத்தும் அதனால தான் ஆட்டோ சிஸ்டம் நமக்கு முழுமையாக லாஸ் ஆச்சு ஸோ இப்போ இதுக்கு மறுபடியும் மறுபடியும் மருந்துகளை கொடுத்து குணப்படுத்த முடியுமான்னா எந்த காலகட்டத்திலும் மருந்தை எடுத்துட்டு உடம்பு குணப்படுத்தாது இன்னொன்று உணவு வந்து மருந்தானால் உடல் மருத்துவராயிடும் அப்போ அந்த உணவுக்கு ரொம்ப முக்கியம் அல்கலைன் உணவுகள் இந்த அல்கலைன் உணவுகளை தான் நம்ம பாரம்பரியத்தில் வரகு திணை சாமை குதிரைவாளி போன்ற அற்புதமான உணவுகளை பயன்படுத்த ஆரம்பித்தாங்க You can now see that almost every ancient Indian tradition has a scientific explanation behind it. Some of them are deeply spiritual and very much beyond the understanding of the common man because of which they were linked to the concept of blind belief. After years of experience and observation, our forefathers have drafted these traditions to be imbibed into societal living and lifestyles to ensure a healthy, peaceful living. So let's start looking deeper. Let's start truly appreciating the riches we have been provided with. Let us look at our customs with a positive curiosity. After all, isn't it our duty as the future generation to carry them forward? Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm a huge skeptic of everything, of people, of anything. I, <laughs> I, I tend to think, I was telling my wife this the other day, because I did an audition, right. and my, my manager, he was like, that's, I was like, tell me what you think. He said, he, he wrote us something and he said, this is excellent. And I told my wife, I was like, I think he's lying to me. Right. <laughs> but I assume, and I told her, I think everybody's lying to me. <laughs> like, that's just how my brain has always worked. It's not anything that it's, he's given me any reason to think that he's right. it's just the way you're, It's just the way you frame I, things. <laughs> I don't know why. I've as, Just as a kid, I was like, yeah, they're probably lying. <laughs> I probably did terrible. They're probably just tr- not trying to hurt my feelings. Yeah. That's how much of a skeptic I am. I'm assuming if you're telling me something, you're probably lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, that's cool because all these, like, I guess you call them either traditions or superstitions, not just India, but 
every, 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 every culture every has, culture has this stuff. Yeah. But it's cool when sometimes like the science behind them is Absolutely. actually proven because actually ancient civilizations and older cultures were really smart. Yeah. Because they didn't have like, we had the toothbrush, what, a hundred, hundred something years ago that was probably invented. Right. What did they brush their teeth with? Right. Uh, like, so like they didn't have medicine. Right. They had it. So there's been science for gen like centuries. Yes. Uh, and so they've had reasons for uh, not always. Some no. of them are just either religious or yes. just because they thought this worked. Right. Um, and it didn't. But yeah. They did and it, it did because they thought it worked. But it's cool to see like when sometimes like there's actual scientific evidence behind some yes. of these things. And I'm very. There's two camps to this on the one, and I think they're equally important. I think it's really important for people to see, especially Westerners, to see Eastern traditions. Because far too often, a Western mindset uh, will look at those things and make the immediate assumption that that is pure superstition yeah. without ever investigating the, the actual reason for what they do. It's probably what you use for yoga. Abs for very much so. But every single one of those things is absolutely the kind of thing that could be relegated in the mind of a Westerner to look at it and go, that is just ancient superstition without ever really looking into it and recognizing, you know what, there's actually some science behind that and there's actually some real faith behind that. Mm -hmm. The other camp is that there are some things you should look at and go, you know what, there really isn't any science behind that. That is an empty superstition, and we're only doing it because we've done it. And when we question it, we're told either you don't question it or it's a it's beyond you. Yeah. Uh, so both camps, yeah. but most especially in the West, I think far too often uh, Westerners will assume they're the more advanced culture, and they'll look at things from the East, and they'll either go one of two ways: they'll fully dive in and go they've been completely enlightened because they went to the East, and they'll abandon everything West. Or they won't even look at the East and say, you guys live in the Dark Ages and we're way ahead of you. Yeah, that, this is really good. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and what America thinks they know about the East. Yeah. Is, and I, <laughs> you just, I, it's, you just it's, saw it's, something today. I'm not Twitter. even going to say her name. <laughs> she's a conservative, I guess, pundit, mm. you would call her. Um, but the like, kind of person who, like that guy who said, in, 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 was he in London, who said... All Indian foods are bland. Yes. Yeah. Um, but somebody who they're just they're stupid. But anyway, um, they said that um, who was it? Harry Styles, I think. Um, yeah, he was was on a cover sh photo shoot. He was in a dress. Right. Um, and they were like, "Oh, the left or the Democrats, I guess, in America, are trying to destroy masculinity." masculinity. Right. Yeah, apparently, she's forgotten about you know David Bowie. Uh, <laughs> or many other the, the many other famous artists from America who that is their style and then she said in the east they understand the need for strong men and I said well I guess you don't know them very well and then posted numerous photos of because in South India they I don't know what they're called you know they have the uh -huh. whatever the, the things that they pull up all the time that if a man wore that now, that would be considered a dress here right. in America. Right. Uh, Ranveer has obviously broken gender stereotypes. Yeah. The warriors, not just in India, in China, Japan, wore skirt-like, I don't know what yes. the technical name for them is, but as warriors. So right. you're saying they're not men? Masculine, right. Because their current, your current definition is only women wear dresses? Right. And right. You, could, you could categorically say that, it, you know, a kilt isn't masculine. Oh. It's just absurd, and it does tie into exactly yeah. this type of thing where ignorance is typically the birthplace of bigotry. Yeah. And once you begin to learn about another culture, you recognize a couple of things, not the least of which is, oh, there's way deeper meaning behind this than I gave them credit for. They actually had thought this through. Yeah. Uh, and it's really easy to be an armchair critic about something that you know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah, so this is very great. informative. Let us know more informative videos we can react to down below. <laughs>